Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the canyon. Welcome back to another delightfully overcast Wheelin' Wednesday, where we've got wheeling, but we've got no wheels because uh, once again, I am overburdened uh, by uh, not even unreasonable, but just those regular run-of-the-mill responsibilities. But you know what those regular responsibilities can do? They can wait. They can wait a few minutes while we come out and sit on a bucket chair and uh, muse over I don't know what. A uh, couple uh, folks came over and wheeled a few days ago. I got Esky down off the shelf because the only battery I had charged was a little 853S and I thought, well, that's a prime opportunity. Uh, you may notice a little bit of a tire differential. It almost looks like he's running different tires on the rear relative to the front. These are, of course, 1.9 ruptures stretched onto 2.2 wheels. He is running just the stock single stage J Concepts foams in the front. And he has some sort of, a buddy of mine donated some sort of dual stage 3D printed insert that is specifically made for 1.9 ruptures stretched onto 2.2 wheels. That was a that was a fortuitous occurrence that happening. So this is of course known to the regulars of the channel. Esky is his sort of simple name because he is a sporty kinda. He is very scratched because what we do is. We try to get out of every situation possible without getting off the bucket chair. And unfortunately, it doesn't always work out. We will, at, I think, at some point, build an actual sporty, a shafty. But uh, for now, really, the capabilities, effectively stock Capra axles, again, the stretched ruptures, Amazon chassis, Amazon gearbox, uh, a lot of Amazon. He kind of does a lot of the things. Perhaps not all the things because he doesn't have that spider wasp waist, which promotes that absurd amount of breakover. But he is definitely above the capabilities of many others. Let's see break over on this little descent block here. Yeah. I don't know if he can do absolutely all the things, but man, can he do a lot of the things. Yeah, a great descender too. Okay, his break over, as I said, because he's, pr he's pretty long, he's a bit narrow. His CG is really low because he is really low. Uh, I was driving right alongside a Bushido with this those few days ago. And the top of his roof is just above the, the rock slider on a, <laughs> on a Bushido on stock size General Grabbers. He also has that, you know, I've got crazy weight distribution. He's like 62, 38, something like that. That little spot right there, which I think he made look relatively routine, uh, is a spot where many a vehicle has to shuttle out to the right to get across there. Not, not so this guy. He kind of has all the little He's got all the little cheat codes, all the little tools. And again, aside from perhaps the, um, I couldn't even see where he was, other than perhaps that set of inserts that's in the rear tires, there's nothing exotic about him. So we're just gonna take these few calm, quiet moments early in the AM before I have to get back to actual work and uh, just wheel around a little bit. The, the oldest school Wheelin' Wednesday type of thing. Oh, dummy.
Eski's a problem because he will make <laughs> he will make a line that was designed to be difficult and is in fact difficult oft not look so difficult. Ooh, no. Okay, now there we go. St still still pretty difficult. So now he has to start over. Let's let's go a little wider out here. Yeah, no lift on that front end at all. Oh, he does have the big deluxe Capra portal box weights, which are absurd. So he does have a pretty heavy front axle for a, a stock plastic axle housing. Can we pull that over? No. We need to get that rear driver up onto that little lip or past that lip, one or the other. Gets into a little shuttly spot. I want that to I want that to pull over that lip. I want a lot of things. In the current moment, that's the thing that I want the most. Come on you. Oh, come on you. I don't feel anything wrong. It doesn't it doesn't feel like anything's wrong. We're just Is it the we're in unusually ordinarily oh ordinarily this is what we would call between the wheelbase but we're not between the wheelbase i think we're between the wheel track get it his width front and rear was just such that we were overloading a tire oh come on yeah feels good man feels good it is again just just misting just softly misting and it is it's may it's almost the end of may to any uh anyone speculative about climate change hey let's not get political let's get scientific i took a class in junior college the year i got out of high school I took a class in the junior college taught by a man as old as sand, a very old man, but he was very entertaining. He did the thing where he, uh, and by the way, the class was called oceanography. And uh, he did the thing where he boiled water without changing the temperature, put it in a pressure vessel and it starts boiling. And then he dramatically whips the pressure, the little glass dome off of it and just plunges his hand into it. And everybody's all <gasps> gasp. And uh, like, he was great. He was great. And a big part of oceanography, to those unfamiliar, is stuff about climate. So we learned a lot about climate, climate science and study of the climate. So that is why the, the politicization of climate change, buzzword, is, is wild to me because... Uh, what, what is it? I don't remember who said it. It's been adapted and manipulated too many times. Uh, the only constant in the universe is change. That applies firmly to climate. Uh, because it is quite cool, overcast, and will probably heat up to not too bad today. It's going to be very mild for late May. We're just going to snap into summer this year. One day it's going to be 78, and that's in the Freedom Units. And then the next day it's going to be 95, and it's not going to go back because it's, this is still the desert. Uh, have we experienced climate change? Well, yeah. Yeah, it's constantly changing. It's a, uh, uh, imagine this shape right here where it goes, a sine wave goes up and down. Freeze and thaw, freeze and thaw. That's what the climate has done since li quite literally time immemorial uh, it's the hydrologic cycle it all comes back to the hydrologic cycle which is tied uh, inextricably with the carbon cycle I don't want to get I don't want to put too much science into it I don't want to put any politics into it because what we came down to we discussed this this oh so many years ago over three decades ago we discussed the other buzzword terminology 
man-made climate change. Because in that class, we would say, well, what about, you know, what about the hydrocarbons? And he was like, yeah, could be, could be, might not be. Because we have no, why is it cloudy today? We have no measuring, say we don't possess the ruler to measure it because people have never been in the position that they are now. So we can look at ice cores and we can look at all these things for climate throughout, eh, realistically the past, I don't know. Well, let's be honest about it. 70 years, 70 or 80 years of climate is about what we can look at accurately because there was either no method of recording it or just no one recorded it. So when people make all these predictions of catastrophe, could be, it's all 50-50 at this point, right? Uh, we still, as peoples, have an inability to accurately predict the weather out past like a certain point. We, it's still, it's kind of guessing, like practicing medicine, we're practicing weather. So what is the climate gonna do? Well, we can base off of prior data, right? We can look at patterns. The problem is those patterns aren't reflective of what we live in now because there's more people and more cars and more coal burning power plants. And will that have an effect? I don't know. Will killing, will loading all the tuna with mercury, is that gonna have an effect? Well, yeah, but what is the effect? I don't know. None of us know until it happens. This is the problem. This is the problem when you get to like, we've got basic stuff. As I sit here and, and fiddle with a toy car on a wonderfully overcast morning, I can, uh, knowing full well, inside that vehicle, I'm pointing at it with my finger like this, inside that little vehicle is a battery filled with just a little bit of lithium. It's not, it's, it's not conducive to world or person health to dig it out of the ground. Ba I mean, it, basic, in the short and or long terms. But this is the problem. This is the problem. You can't make people put their shopping carts away. Do you, do you understand? Do you, do you, are you picking up the analogy that I'm making now? You can't make a person put their shopping cart away. So what would make a person, choose any random person, think that they could compel another randomly chosen person to alter the way in which they lead their lives because of X unknown, some potential future unknown. It's, it's not gonna happen. It ha if it were absolutely immediate, if changing climate, which let, it, it's inarguable that it's changing, that's what it does. Uh, if it, it would have to be as immediate as the impact of a cinematic asteroid. And even then, I don't think you would be able to convince most people that this is happening because we don't know what's happening. <laughs> we don't know what the end result is. Are the sea levels gonna go up? Are the sea levels gonna go down? We can look at prior data. And this comes from, I am not a scientist. I'm a pseudo-scientist at best. And it doesn't mean that I'm like, well, screw it. I'm gonna run my house on coal, right? It, it's, not, it's not that. I put my shopping cart away and I make those think globally, act locally. You know, it's, it's that. But I also don't believe that we should be replacing all the diesels with electric cars because you can grow diesel in a field in Iowa. And the battery that's in that tiny little toy car, thinking globally, is not a problem. There's, that battery weighs three ounces with all of its bits and bobs and parts and pieces. The battery in an electric car weighs a ton. And uh, last I checked, you can point it out in the comments, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, uh, we haven't figured out how to recycle lithium yet. At least that's my understanding. If they have, it would be nascent technology because the last time I checked, they haven't figured out how to recycle it yet. So, it, there's a fundamental distrust of other people, of everyone else. And I think that's natural. Uh, I think that is 
We could get into a long argument about human instinct. Are humans instinctual? Do we have instinct? Did we lose it? Did we lose it when we moved indoors? Oof. Watch out. It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday, my dudes. It could get philos- it could get philosophical. It could get falsely philosophical. It could get dime store philosophical. I just think that we we have to look. We don't have to. You can ignore all of this for your whole life and nothing will change. This is this is what we call inevitabilities. There are there is one constant in the universe, it is change. What we're trying to wrestle with, at least those of us who think about it, is the climate changes. Does it change because of people? Is that hubris? I am neither denying nor confirming human uh, what altered whatever climate change, right? Because we don't know. We, we, we haven't been a civilization of technologists. We haven't had adequate technology for long enough. People are still baffled by the fact that Egyptians were making beer and, and moving giant stone blocks. Human beings are, in, are capable of incredible acts of both progress and destruction. And I think that is inarguable. Are there people in the world who lead their lives as if climate science is non-existent? Yes. Are there people who lead their lives as if the sky is literally falling? Yes. And, you know, moderation, man. Everything in moderation. I don't have a single incandescent light bulb in my entire house. I don't even have any CFLs yet left. Except, wait, I take that back. There is an incandescent bulb in my oven because I don't think they've made LEDs yet that can withstand the 500 degrees Fahrenheit that can be generated within an oven. So that oven is, that, that incandescent bulb is on whenever the oven door is open. But that's it. Did I change them because of concern for the planet as a whole? I mean, come on. Come on. No. If you're doing that, I, let's chalk it up as self-delusion. Those people are deluded. I did it because I don't like the electric company. And I want them to charge me less money. So if there's something that I can do to make my electric bill smaller, I'm going to do it. If that has a, uh, a future impact on the world, fine. Positively or negatively, I feel like I did my part. Uh, do I feel, oh, I didn't, I, you know, honestly, when I came, ooh, that breeze is chilly. When I came out here to sit on the bucket chair, I had no intention of getting metaphysically over pondery. Yet, nevertheless, here we are. And uh, I have a hoodie that on the back of it says, nobody watches Wheelin' Wednesday. And I don't mean that negatively. There are a, a select, beautiful handful, a few, that do watch Wheelin' Wednesday. So we're just sitting down and having a, and having a one-sided conversation. Your, uh, your opinions, and they're all opinions, because we can't, we can't science. We are the experiment. We're performing the experiment right now. We are living the experiment. And isn't that the fun slash terrifying part of the whole thing? We don't know what's going to happen. Is Venice going to sink into the Mediterranean? Maybe. Uh, Is it going to snow in the Sahara? Maybe. They know that, what is it? How many thousands of years ago? 10,000 years ago? 12,000 years ago? The Sahara Desert was the biggest rainforest on the planet. But then the climate changed. Uh, It was a breakthrough. In In that class, in oceanography, all those many years ago, I learned a thing that I had never actually in my life considered. 
I had never considered, I mean, I knew it, but I hadn't really put any thought into the fact that like this stuff, you see a little, you see a little bit of it right over there. That's a tree. That's a pepper tree. Trees are living things. Obvious statement of the day. We had to get it out of the way. But no living thing lives forever. Lobsters could live forever, but they get doomed by their own shells. Trees don't live forever. So trees just die. They just die. Some trees die because they got old. Some trees die because beetles got to them. Nothing lasts forever. Nothing. The only constant in the universe is change. So will we in our lifetimes, and we are close to the ends, we're closer to the ends than we are to the starts. I'm speaking to most of you, except for a select few number of Canyon Arrows that actually watch this sort of stuff. Uh, Y'all youngsters, are you going to have to pay for the, the reckless hubristic acts of those who came before you? Maybe. Possibly. Um, just put your shopping carts away. I mean, I think, I think, I think if there's a single takeaway, it's that. I remember reading that someone, someone basically wrote a paper about it, that the, the, the shopping cart, was it the shopping cart theory, the shopping cart something, uh, is, it's a selfless act. There's no reward for putting your shopping cart away. There's no penalty for not putting your shopping cart away. So the only motivation that you have to put your shopping cart away is that you, in your heart of hearts, believe that it's the right thing to do. So, let's just, let's just sort of lead our lives by the shopping cart theory. If you think it's the right thing to do, then it probably is. It's the right thing to do to put your shopping cart away. Because if you don't, then someone else has to do it. So that's how I kind of try to lead my life. I, I don't shoot massive clouds of smoke into the air because I think it's probably going to be bad. It, in, the, in, the, in the grand scheme of things. I don't know. But there's a lot of unknowns. We will, we will be battered and buffered by unknowns. And we can only just try to know what we can. Am I gonna knock over the first one of the day? No. Yes. We had to get one. And to those of the comments who have said, why don't you put a tether on it? That's exactly why. Because they're supposed to roll seven feet away, so you have to go over there and pick it up and that'll make you not hit it next time. Esky hadn't hit a ball. Hadn't touched one. Uh, and I didn't want to put the cameras up on the on the high walkway up there. So we didn't even finish Green Line. He would have done it, though. He would have cleaned it. No problem. We don't need anything to talk about on a Wednesday. We don't need anything specific to do. What we can do is we can ruminate and speculate and, and remember. At least I remember. That the, the, the only constant in the universe in, is change. And the only thing we can be certain about are the things that we don't know. I'm certain of what I don't know. Uh, what I do know is li literally up for interpretation. We find out that things are what we believed our whole lives was wrong. That same teacher uh, was old enough because 30 years ago he was old. And we asked him, where did volcanoes come from when you were a kid? And he was like, well, I didn't know. Play tectonics wasn't a thing. Like when he went through school, when he went through college, they didn't have play tectonics yet. It's just a thing now. That's where earthquakes come from. But we didn't know. So we just gotta try to know, you know? You know, if you know, you know. But do you really, we don't really know. We think we know. So before we fall down a well inextricably, too deep of armchair dime store philosophizing, I, uh, I have filled my allocated number of minutes for the morning, and now I've got to do real things for the rest of the day. At least the weather is nice. It's super nice. Let's look up to where all the birds are. 
this this is what I like. See, the sky should be the neutral gray of uh, the the cards that you use to set white balance on a camera, because that means I'm not getting roasted out here. It's just nice. It's just nice. I hope your day was nice. I hope the rest of your week is nice. I thank you so much for joining me in between now and when we meet again. Please one and all do your very best. Have a good one, everybody. This is a film camera masquerading as a video camera, so it can record files up to 29 minutes and 59 seconds long, minus the edits, and that's going to happen right about 